so these are the flesh tones that I use. Um, does not matter uh, the mm. darkness, the lightness of the skin. Um, I see, I start with the same colors and then I use uh, different ratios for different skin types. So ranging from very, very pale, pale Caucasian skin to mid-tone, kind of like on the lighter end of olive skin, all the way through to very, very dark, rich, um, like beautiful sub-Saharan skin that you'll see like purplish tones even in. Um, the range of colors that I start with is right here. Um, so right here I have ivory black. And you don't really have to get too preoccupied with a brand, uh, the brand of paint the maker of paint that I really like is a uh, Blue Ridge right here. I just have a few different tubes from a few different companies. This right here is Chinese Vermilion. Right here I have Roman Ochre. This specific brand of ochre has a really nice um, yellow cast to it. And that's uh, from Italy. That's from Zecchi, Z-E-C-C-H-I. This is Michael Harding. And this is his Genuine Naples Yellow Deep. And then right here I have some Kremnitz White. So let's talk about the darker range of tones. Um, and again, uh, I always wear gloves when I dispense my paints because I transport my paints and sometimes they get a little bit messy. And to begin with, to mix the paint color, it uh, doesn't matter which um, stage of painting, I kind of always start out with like a similar um, pooling of paints where I take, let's say, I'll take some Roman ochre right here. I always have paper towel handy. Then I'll take a little bit of Naples yellow, maybe a little bit more. I wipe that off. Just trying to get it a little bit dry. There's my um, Chinese vermilion. So my black right here. And I'll just leave the black there. Actually, I probably could have moved that for demonstrations purposes a little bit more over here. So I'll just put that there for now. And then I will grab some white. And I just wipe off like this. Pretty dry now. So now the white goes at the base over here. And so I actually want to mix up a little bit more white. And so, grab some more Kremnitz. And I pull a little bit towards each one of these colors right here. So right there, I have a, like a threefold stripe. Now I am not saying that this is the, the approach to painting for all artists for all time. Um, this is just how I, through the years, I came up with this uh, approach. I thought I was all clever. And then I was mixing color one day in front of a friend and uh, the friend looks over at me and said, uh, what are you doing there? And I said, oh, I'm just mixing up my colors. I came up with this like little gradation technique and he said, oh, I didn't know that you were a color string mixer. And I was like, what's that? And he said, that's been around forever. Um, so anytime I think I'm original, somebody comes along and tells me that they've, you know, that humanity has been doing it for hundreds of years. All right, so what you see right here is a thick to thin, thick to thin. And by thick to thin, I literally mean thicker paint, thinner paint, thicker paint, thinner paint. And I pull the one towards the other. And what happens is... I have a gradient now from, I'm just gonna call this yellow, yellow to pure white. And now I'm gonna go over and take some of this Roman ochre. Roman ochre, I almost regard it as being a dirty yellow. And I pull this towards pure white 
right here. I'll just clean that off. This paint right here can still be used, but for demonstration purposes, I'm trying to keep the colors a little bit cleaner. And then pulling the Chinese vermilion towards pure white, and then the pure white back to Chinese vermilion. And so what you see right there is you see this gradation from a very saturated pure pink to um, deep red, very, um, kind of a, a dirty yellow right here to deep dirty yellow, and then yellow to pure yellow. Now, the thing that um, I always point out to students is the Roman ochre right here, I don't regard this as being um, green, but let's just, let's just call it for um, our purposes right now, let's just call this dirty yellow to green. So the green-ish aspect of the Roman ochre will somewhat cancel out its complement, the Chinese vermilions. But you could look at that and say, well, that's not green. Well, no, it's green-ish. It participates in green. And as such, it's not going to truly cancel out the red of the Chinese vermilion. It's going gonna, it's gonna to act to cancel it somewhat, but both will still somewhat be present. So I like this. Um, I want this play in my paintings where I don't want red and ochre to truly cancel each other out. I kind of like that right there. I like what's happening there. That's a nice color to begin with. So I'll wipe this off. And now you can see that there's this kind of an interesting flesh tone resulting right here. Um, I know that I just said this before, but bear with me. I don't think that this is for every artist. Some artists would look at this and be horrified and say that's the worst idea for color mixing. And guess what? They're right. Um, for my purposes, I like it. It works well. I have a different harbor that I'm steering towards than some. And so um, the, the means that I'm choosing are somewhat different. So right here, um, you have like these like kind of pleasing midtones that are coming about. And then what I'll do is I'll grab a little tiny bit of black. I just touch it with the brush and you can mix that in and just quiets down the flesh tone. Just a little bit so it's not too saturated. And you can kind of do this to taste. And you can introduce more colors if you want. You could cut out Roman ochre altogether and just have red and Naples yellow. I do that very often depending on the complexion of the sitter. But uh, let's go back to um, skin colors. So um, I am a product, but um, the flesh tone that I have is more on the lighter end of the olive family. I say that and you can look at my skin and say, nope, you're definitely pasty white. Um, but the thing is that you'll have some people that have white skin that goes all the way towards blue. It can be so white. Um, so I'd be somewhat towards the more olive end of the white fam of the white skin. Um, then you'll have a deeper olive, which when you have deeper olive, you're going to be hovering around here, uh, where you can have these really rich tones that you pull out from very early on. And then, Obviously, as we go towards more um, deeper, richer skin from India, from Africa, uh, really rich tones, you're going to have this end of the spectrum right here. Where now I'm going to take, I'm even taking the same brush and the same principle that I used right here, I'm actually going to use um, right here to get a darker play. So I'm going to go from this is my new mid-tone right here towards black and pulling from black towards the red. And right here, you can see this really beautiful brown coming about. Again, this is Chinese vermilion. You could do this though with different colors. Um, I've seen artists do this with siennas, with umbers, with Venetian red, with Indian red. Um, there are so many possibilities out there, so I'm not trying to push one particular tube of paint. But right there, we have our spectrum. So you could say, where do I begin? Well, you can start by mixing all the colors together, such as right over here. 
And this is a beautiful range right here for darker skin. Right over here is a beautiful range for lighter skin, but you're gonna see elements of all skin types participate in each other. Um, so I use the same, I use the same palette for somebody from way, way, way high up in the Celtic area, really, really white skin that's almost blue, um, all the way rich and deep to like, let's say Latin America where there's beautiful rich and brown tones getting over to deep, deep black skin that has purple in it. Um, this is all to be found right here. And do I ever add anything to it? Absolutely. But this is my base from which I start and I can work with this for a very long time. Um, the last thing I'll say is a little bit of medium. I have a little bit of Demeyer medium that I like working with. Uh, bring somewhat of a prismatic effect to the colors. I really don't add this on day one, but um, I will start adding this medium already uh, by day two. And it brings like a light and nice luster to the flesh tones.